spread van God and So let me focus first for a minute on the title. Poor, full man's battle. We can change it to be repentance, full man's act. In many occasions we come to church, we confess our sins, we read spiritual books, we attend conferences and retreats, and still in the same position. Still struggling from whatever sin it is. Why? Because of this, when we participate in our battles, only with our thoughts, or our emotions, sometimes you are in a meeting and you are in tears, but you'll go out and continue your sin. So we need to recognize this as a spiritual fact in our warfare at all times, whatever the sin is. Today we will speak specifically on porn, full man's battle. I'm sure you heard or heard about the book, uh, Every Man's Battle, Every Young Man's Battle, Every Woman's Battle, and Every Young Woman's Battle. So it's not only every man's battle, it's a whole man, a full man battle. We will know exactly what does it mean during our first talk. But let me start with this verse. St. Paul says in Romans chapter 6, verse 14, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. The biggest problem in any battle, especially in war, two lies. The first lie is, there is no freedom. You will remain as you are all your life. St. Paul is telling us, sin shall not have the being over you. No way. So now I am in a position to choose. Either to, to believe God, his word, or to believe and to work, unfortunately, with the liar and the father of all lies, as St. John says in John 8.44. The second lie is, if there is a total freedom, it is not for you. It's for St. Anthony and St. Paul and the great saints of the Bible. So at the very beginning, St. Paul is putting before us, is it real freedom, total freedom, and it's for you. Why? Because you are not under the law, but under grace. Whatever your sin, whatever the time you spent in this sin, whatever the captivity that you were struggling for years, is the total freedom, and this total freedom is given to you in person, or offered to you in person. Okay? If this is in my mind, then I'm aiming to a real freedom, and total freedom, and it's for me. Let me start with you, with why born is an issue. Just yesterday, we got a text from someone, why is it a problem? Why is it a sin? So let me read with you these few verses from the book of Genesis, which is telling us some facts. Sometimes we miss them. It's the story of Noah. Genesis chapter 9, verse 21 to 27. Then he drank of the wine and was drunk and became uncovered in his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. But Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it on both their shoulders, and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned away and they did not see their father's nakedness. It seems an old story. So Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done to him. Then he said, this is a consequence, just because of your nakedness. Not watching the nakedness, just because of this. And definitely, Ham did not find out when is my dad going to be naked. It's just an accident, and he saw it by accident. Cursed be Adam, be Canaan, a servant of servants, he shall be to his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant, may God enlarge Jephus, and may be dwell in the tents of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. So the seriousness is as such. I'm putting myself under, myself under a curse. Not only by watching, Sometimes, unfortunately, we share what we are watching. Sometimes by re uh, revisiting, even in my mind, what I am doing. So at the very beginning, I have to see how serious this sin is. If you believe that one in two marriages in the United States is broken because of pornography. This is a statistic, not our own imagination. Every single house is struggling now 
95% of the struggles because of a sexual addiction in any way. So we are not talking about something very simple. When Chris was telling us in the first talk that it's a commitment of three hours for the first three weeks, yes, because you are fighting the devil. You are restoring a family. And maybe he's a young boy or a young girl. Yes, you are restoring a future family, avoiding them to have a divorce or to have a serious issues. So we are not here to say it's a nice battle. You know, it's a fierce battle facing the devil. Especially in this time, if we know that from the age of 8 till 16, 91% are suffering. Do you imagine? That's why it's not about finding a counselor. You can't find a counselor for 91% of the people in the world. We need to help each other. We need to seek Christ and the Holy Spirit who is able to guide us in this journey. One more thing. We need to know and we need to change our language. It's very easy to say, I tried many times and I failed. I am weak. I have a very weak will. And again, this is another lie. Why? Let us read Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. Saint Paul is telling us, the will is a verb, not noun. The devil is trying to convince you that your will is a noun. You have a weak will, or you have a strong will, and that's it. No. Saint Paul says, therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation. That's why the mentor and the mentee working out together with the Holy Spirit to work out our own salvation. With fear and trembling, for it is God, and here he is telling you, if you rely on the noun, my will is weak, you are avoiding the power of God in your life. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. So you have to renounce this and you have to encourage your mentees. It's not your weak will. God is able to change because will is a verb as it is a noun, of course. But don't accept it's only a noun in your life. So, going to our title, Porn is Full Man's Battle. Why? I'm sure everyone was struggling from any sin, he tried many times. He said, I tried and I failed. How many times, even if you are trying to make a diet, maybe you have 15 books about diet, and 20 ty different types about diet, and you went into classes, you are still there. Why? Because still it's a theory or a knowledge but not the whole man working on it. Let me explain this diagram in a minute. So if I believe that every man is body, soul, and spirit, if you'd like to fight, the whole man has to fight. Every occasion you tried with part of it, you failed. Or you were successful for a few days or a few weeks, and then I'm back again. Why? If my body is not participating, I am always defeated. If my soul, or even part of my soul, is not participating, I am always defeated. So, this is the main diagram. This is a conclusion of many spiritual books, especially St. John Cassian. Uh, everyone spoke about the passions of the body. This is a summary of it. But now I make it more specific on pornography. So, all of them said the battle of the body is gluttony. You'll find Many times in the early church father, the seven deadly sins or the eight deadly sins, especially by St. John Cassian. You'll find many times, as Nagla is going to share with us today, uh, one of the very famous scholars nowadays called Patrick Cairns. He's saying, and we discovered recently, last 20, 25 years, that there is a connection between food, uh, eating disorder and lust. This is what's written by St. John Cassian, especially in his conference number five, 16 centuries before. So what is discovered now by psychology is already known by the church father from life experience years ago. So gluttony, we'll speak in details about gluttony as a source of lust and why and how we can work on it. Our souls, we know that souls, emotions, well, most of the books are things as such.
let you imagine kida one moment you are attending a retreat about holiness or sanctification and you found out that you can't live this miserable unholy life anymore you are in tears your mind 100% sure of what is going on so my thoughts now i heard the truth my emotions i am in tears what are you going to do when you go home i will continue why with the third bar in the act the will what are you going to do to stop yourself from doing this sin whatever it is especially if it's born i will do nothing lord if you want to stop me stop me no the grace is free but not cheap you have to cooperate with you with your free will even in a very small scale the last thing is our spirits every sin in our lives there is certain spirits trying to attack us especially for this sin you will find it in many books by the church fathers and there is a very nice small book by Abu Nadir Yaqub the title is if you would like would you like to be victorious rejoice 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 is mentioning these two parts there is two spirits if you are defeated by them you will be a very lost soul the spirit of pride and the spirit of sadness we'll speak again about both of them in details but this is the idea of how it's a full man's battle whatever your sin today again it's the same diagram but it will be different from a sin to another so our focus today is only on board let us start with the body first here is what St. John Cassian saying in conference number 5 which I told you it's the whole conference is about the relationship between gluttony and lust he's saying and to make this clearer not only by a short discussion to the best of my ability but by the scripture proof as well gluttony and fornication though they exist in us naturally for sometimes they spring up without any incitement from the mind and simply at the motion and allurement of the flesh yet if they are to be consummated must find an external object and thus take effect only through bodily acts for every man is tempted of his own lust so 16 centuries ago they find the connection between gluttony and fornication so what I can do that's why when Chris was saying it's an orthodox recovery program will see the beauty and the power of fasting the beauty and the power of prostrations, matanias why? because we believe in every occasion every time when I am attacked with such thing the Lord says very clearly this kind cannot come out except by prayer and fasting so can you defeat the spirit of unholiness or this spirit of lust by your own? you can't it's a very good opportunity that we started now uh, during the Great Lent. It's not a habit of every year we fast for 50 days, 55 days, no. It's a time to claim and reclaim our victory in Christ. I have many uh, quotes by the Church Father to show the connection. You'll find even books about this. So I would like to share only one of them. St. Augustine is saying the same. St. John's Christian is adding more and more about this saint anthony is saying the same thing let me share with you what saint anthony is saying he's saying the second kind of movement in the body is produced by too abundant food and drink when the resulting heat in the blood stimulates the body to fight against the soul and urges it towards impure lust many of us unfortunately they put aside totally abstaining during the fast I'm not used to it. I can't function without a cup of coffee or a cup of tea in the morning. You are losing the power. You are making your own rule. So if all the church fathers in the early church were confirming that gluttony, full stomach, is the real cause for our bodies to rage such war against us. We are not here to introduce something new. It's nowadays, as I said, Science started to say, yes, there is a relationship between eating disorder and lust. But the reality is that church discovered this centuries before. So with your spiritual father, you will find a way during this time, or 90 days, or even all your life, how to be powerful using the power of each and every fast in the church. And even if needed, 
you, we, you, you with your spiritual father, you can add something at a certain time to gain and to claim this victory that you are in need of. The first thing is our souls. If the soul is thoughts, emotions, and, uh, and will. Most of us, not all of us, has certain lies in our minds. Believe it or not, I'll tell you a real story. I was at one day in one of the countries outside the United States. So one of the police told me, I need you to sit with someone who is struggling from same-sex attraction. And I, he was in his mid-thirties. And he was a doctor, by the way. So I told him, uh, I would like to know the beginning of the story, how you started your struggle. I'll tell you what he said, believe it or not. He said, till the age of 21, I believed if I am masturbating, I am a gay. And then at the age of 21, he started to have a relationship. You believe that? And someone living in the West, not living in our Egypt, and he can't yeah, understand what's going on around him. So sometimes we have very bad lies in our minds, and very obvious lies. But I, will, I never exposed my lies to anyone. So we encourage everyone to expose your lies to your spiritual father. Expose your lies in your prayers. Lord, this is what I believe. Is it true? Is it right? That's why the Lord was showing us here. You are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do it was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him and when he speaks a lie he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and father of it in all our spiritual battles born or anything else we need to be committed to the word of god committed to the understanding of the church to the word of god otherwise i will live in this life and the liar is a deceiver he came to destroy and to kill from the beginning. As, in, as the Lord himself said in John, as in Paul is telling Timothy, then you will know the truth. Hold to the teaching. The Lord was telling them, you know, as I told you now, maybe I know 15 uh, ways to diet, but still I am the same person. The Jews, in chapter 8, verse 31, he said, then the Jews who had believed him, we believe it's the same. That's why, why one of the reasons why we have started to make this recovery program every one of us if you are addicted or not you know it's bad google it online you'll find hundreds of sermons how bad is it is to watch porn or to have any sort of sex addiction so what i can do what you are trying to do in this program is to be help to find a help mate someone to help me to get out of it the church your father of confession and the mentor whoever it is so they believed but they didn't not abide in the truth yet. He was saying to them, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. We need to hold. Reading the Bible is not something, it's not a book you take in the end. I'm done. I'm good today. I'm trying to expose the lies of the devil to live the truth. You are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Why I'm not free? I'm not holding to his teaching. What does it mean holding to teaching? It means when I find the truth in any verse or any teach, church teaching, I'm fasting now. Lord, I'm fasting today that you will implant this word. And James says in James 1, chapter 20, uh, verse 21, the word which is implanted, which is a word that you have heard, I need to implant the word in my mind. So my daily prayers, I'm asking implant this truth in my mind. I lived for years believing in a lie. You're fasting the same. In the liturgy, every liturgy, Lord, this is the word I need you to implant in my, in my heart. I'm getting your body and your blood to strengthen me to live the new reality that you are putting in front of my eyes. Second thing is our emotions. There's a very simple rule, many rules, I'm sharing with you one only. Because again, if my, my mind is telling me there is a lie, I get out of this lie by implanting the word of God in me. This is what is called halt. It's acronym for hunger, anger, 
loneliness, darkness. Again, it's not only about pornography, but we can utilize it about pornography. So the key to maintaining a life in recovery is a combination of self-care and self-awareness. This is the role of the whole church means of grace and your mentor is helping you to show you how to be self-aware and self -care. By taking care of ourselves and recognizing certain signs, we can prevent these relapse or even to go deeper. If you talk to anyone who is watching board a year ago, now he is more deeper. He is indulging himself in something more worse and so on. So it's good to know and to be self-aware and self-caring about ourselves. One of these tools is this halt. And let me explain it in a minute. Hungry for love. What does it mean hungry for love? By the way, the four words, hungry for love, angry for unmet needs, lonely, tired, you can most of the time be attacked by the four of them, or at least three of them. And maybe this is your mode most of the days. So what does it mean? I can't change it. I have a real need and it's not satisfied. That's why I'm angry. Or I am in need of love and I'm hungry for such love, but there's no way to find it. So in my quiet time, with my mentor, with myself in the presence of God, I'm asking him to find new ways when I'm hungry for love. What are the good options for, he, for me personally? What I'm going to do? The easiest way now, I will log in into any website. Is it right for me? I know it's wrong. So I need to find from now where I'm relaxed, ways to satisfy the four needs. When I'm lonely, what are you going to do? Are you going to phone a friend? Are you going to phone your mentor? Are you going to stand and pray? Are you going to prostrate before the Lord and to find the way out? What are you going to do? So by all means, I have to sit with myself to find a way of this heart. When I am tired, what are you going to do? Again, I'll switch on my computer or my phone or whatever it is. Or I have to find my own set of activities to fulfill my hunger, my anger, my loneliness, and my tiredness. You will go through it in details in your, with your mentor whenever it's needed. One last thing is the will, the actions. Let me read these few verses. It's the story of the chaos. And again, when we think of the story of the chaos, I'm telling you, many times you attended retreats or conferences or sermons and you decided, and your decision was sincere, but you remained in your position. Why? Here is the story. It says, so he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him. You'll find in the story of the chaos, every single step of the story, he has taken a willful action. Yes, he heard about a great teacher who can change his life. Okay, I know, I heard about him. You will see nothing. I know I am bad, I am a tax collector. Okay, what are you going to do? Nothing. But he did something at the beginning. He ran willfully. The Bible was telling us he was very rich. It's very humiliating for a rich man to climb a tree because he's short of stature and he wants to see the teacher. For he was going to pass that way. Then the king stood and said to the, the Lord told him, I would like to visit you today. Okay, it's done. Now I became a friend of this great teacher. No. My mind is telling me there is something wrong and my, I'm in tears. He told me that I'm going to be in your home. He's telling us he was willfully taking another step. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, 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 I give half of my goods to the poor. He didn't ask him for it. But because he is willfully repenting, saying, my will is taking action. That's why in, in Paul, for example, is I know I'm weak, so what are the doors? Maybe my mobile or my iPad or my, my whatever it is. What is your simple decision you are going to take and be account with your mentors and your father's confession that you will take. I will take nothing. I can't do anything. And then you are going to be remain where you are and worse day by day. We need to know our will has to participate in any act of repentance. Then he continued. And if I have taken anything from anyone a false, by false acquisition, I restore fourfold. 
Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house. Not because he welcomed him, but because he acted with his old soul. His body worked, he climbed the, the, the sycamore tree. The spirit of loving money is broken. This is was his spirit part. And now his soul, his mind worked, his thoughts worked, and now my will, willfully, I will give all these things. So think of your own struggle, whatever it is. Especially if you are struggling with this, or you are helping a struggle. If the whole man is not participating, there is a serious issue. And sometimes I'm not going to confess anymore. Why? Because I'm going to say the same thing. It's because you are going to repent fully. Your mind is repenting, your heart is repenting, but your will is passive, doing nothing. Again, God is not asking you to make a big decision. Just start with a small one, then grow and mature in it. Because again, if we believe that the grace of God is offered to every one of us without my willful participation, I do nothing. Start and believe that the will is a verb. God who works in you to will. go to the spirit part, pride. You'll find again many of the church fathers are saying pride leads to adultery. Why? You said first, gluttony leads to fornication, and they say the same. And the more you have the pride, no one can see your pride, even if it's just in your mind. But the more we have such pride in our mind, we are indulging ourselves in the worst form of lust and fornication. So, here is what St. John Clinic was saying. A proud man or a monk has no need to a of a devil. He has become a devil and enemy of himself. Then you will find him talking a lot about the relationship between pride and fornication. That's why we find a very nice word in the Bible. Unfortunately, in Arabic you can't find it, and in English even you can't find it. It's the humility of mind. It's mentioned seven times in the New Testament, never mentioned in the Arabic, in Arabic translated only humility. In English, in one translation, once was translated humility in mind. So sometimes we believe I am acting humbly, I am serving everyone, but he's telling you and me. It's about your mindset. You can despise and disrespect the whole world in your mind while you are offering an act of love from outside. So St. John Climacus is telling us it's about something deeper than your act from outside. Again, he is adding here, angel from, from heaven without any other passion except pride. He's talking about the fall of Satan. And so we may ask whether it is possible to ascend to heaven by humility alone without any other of the virtues. Again, one of the contemporary theologians said, in brief, the first Adam, first Adam, through pride, disobeyed and were kicked out of paradise. The second Adam came with full humility, obeying to the death, death of the cross, restored back us to paradise. Every single thought, every single action, every single word that comes out of your mouth, it says and it tells, are you in the first Adam? Or second, are you in paradise or are you outside of this paradise? So the spirit of pride, you need to read about what the church father said about pride. Again, it, whatever my sin is, but here in particular this sin leads to fornication or any sex addiction. I need to know that my prostrations, again with the guidance of my spiritual father, every prostration, it's a real death and a real resurrection of the Lord. I'm burying my pride, my thoughts, under the cross and rising up with the humility of Christ. That's why St. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, we have the mind, but we have the mind of Christ. I need to gain this mind of Christ through the truth, which is the word of God, and through a real humility. I need to bury my pride and to rise with the humility of Christ and with the mind of Christ. Then the spirit of sadness. 
What does it mean? Yeah, even statistically, he said, sorrow leads always to I am going to my own bubble, then I'm going to my own cycle of addiction, whatever it's alcohol, pornography, or whatever it is. Let me read with you a couple of verses. Nehemiah 8.10, and then we'll read Deuteronomy 28. Nehemiah tells us, then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared, for this day is holy to our Lord. Great. Why? Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So now I am sad because of anything. Work problem, family problem, church problem even, I am sad. What I am going to have is I will lose the strength of the Lord. What is the next step? Here is the plan of the enemy. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, he is telling us about the curse and blessing. The curse here in verse 47, because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of heart. Is it a problem? I am sad, but I am serving. I am distressed, but I am doing it because it's a duty. No. For the abundance of everything, we have the abundance of everything. We have the full victory of Christ. We have to claim it. As Sincere is explaining it very clearly in his 12th uh, homily on the Gospel of St. Luke. Therefore, you shall serve your enemies and in this point why because i left the joy of the lord i lost the strength and now i'm serving the enemy what i have to do again with the help of your spiritual father and your mentor or you if you are the mentor you have to find joyful ways to make yourself joyful maybe it's a song maybe it's a song about joy maybe it's portions and you'll see in the program, we have many portions of the and the scriptures to see the joy that's set before you, the joy that is given to you. For example, if you imagine the whole book of Jeremiah, it's a book, or even we call Jeremiah the crying prophet, but he has one joy. Do you know where? Chapter 16, verse 15. He told him, I found your work, I ate it. And it became, became for me joy and gladness. So there is a joy in the Word of God. Find your list of joy, whether scriptures, songs, psalms, even spiritual books. But you can't leave yourself in this miserable, sorrowful time because it will lead always to a defeat. That's why the Lord Himself is telling you. We like to search for the main cause of joy. So you can easily say, I can't see the Lord. If He is there, why He is leading me to suffer as such? He is the opposite of what we are used to saying. Therefore, you now have sorrow. He was telling the disciples just before going to the cross. But I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice. The joy is that He is seeing you now. Not you are seeing Him. You can miss seeing Him, but He will never miss seeing you. I will see you again and your heart will rejoice and your joy no one will take from you. He is telling you, you have the key. I am seeing you day and night. I am over seeing you and watching you day and night. Can this be a source of, source of joy for you always and forever? Find out the power portions in the word of God. The best is that is telling you, I see you, I care about you. I love you while you are still struggling. I love you while you are still sinning because I know that you are fighting. Yes, you failed this time, but you are not failing forever because I am always with you. Let me finish with this quote by Saint Cyril the Great. He's telling us, you have the greatest miracle, the ever miracle in the church. It's the body and the blood of Christ. Again, it's not a habit. It's not a blessing. It's not something we used to make it once or twice or even every day. It is a real remedy of immortality. Hear what he says. If the poison of pride, we spoke about pride a minute ago, is swelling up in you, turn to the Eucharist and that bread, which is your God humbling and disguising himself, will teach you humility. Can be this your prayer 
in each and every refugee. If the fever of selfish greed rage in you, feed on this bread and you will learn generosity. If the cold wind of coveting wizards you, hasten to the bread of angels and charity will come to blossom in your heart. Lastly, the last part of the quote, if you feel scorched by the fever of impurity, go to the banquet of the angels and the spotless flesh of Christ will make you pure and chaste. This is a continuous miracle on the altar and offered to each and every one of us, offered to us as mentors, offered to each mentee, because we are, what we are doing in the liturgy is very real every time. May the glory of Lord Jesus Christ be with you from now and forever and ever.